The Forages Scottish Island Adventure is a fully immersive weekend of wild food excitement. We take you to the seashore, we take you to the forest for mushrooms, we surround you with seaweed and seafood and wild game and everything that's tasty in the wild. The Scottish trip I think came about when we first met up with Duncan really. That's Dolph. This is sea spaghetti. Oh look at this, nice little doll. Duncan is a, a real renaissance man of seaweed. He's got the, the scientific knowledge, but he's also really passionate about the flavors of seaweed. Duncan is clearly like unbelievably passionate about seaweed. Oh my God, oh my days. Oh my God. <laughs> Having spent several years learning and becoming a doctor on the topic, um, and then becoming a consultant in Loch Fine, studying how to essentially start to farm seaweed around the loch. It's a whole new world that Duncan opens up when he points at those rocky pools on the shore of Easdale. Easdale Island is, is pretty remote. It took about three and a half hours for us to get there from Glasgow Airport. But on arriving, taking a very small, what they call a ferry, I call a dinghy, um, over onto the island, you are welcomed by a selection of um, wheelbarrows. That's when you realize there are no roads, there are no cars. Everything is within five minutes walk of itself and then all surrounded by really beautiful scenery. Everything about it just is, is yeah, it's a really, really beautiful, beautiful place to be. The sushi workshop in particular, it just kind of blow, blows people's minds when we can actually put together an offer with local produce uh, from the island, but providing flavors that you would associate with far, far away being Japan in this instance. I think Japan is a really good place to look when you're talking about a culture that really stays true to the, the ways of using seaweed. You'll cook your sushi rice and you'll have a stick of kombu seaweed in there and then you'll have a miso soup and that's got little leaves of wakame in there. Then the sushi rolls themselves are rolled up in sheets of nori seaweed. And it's just a way of showing how, you know, a love of seaweed and a respect for all the different kinds of seaweed can add up to a really consistent cuisine. It kind of shows you what food could be like if the wild was allowed into every aspect of it. The other thing is being sat around a table. So 10 of us all together, uh, basically trying to trump each other with, with our sushi skills, or lack of, maybe, in some cases. What else am I supposed to do? The Scottish Mushroom Morning that we run as part of this Scottish trip is probably my favorite mushroom forage I've ever been on. The Scottish hills have acres and acres of pine and oak forest and it's just amazing to lose yourself in the forest and see all the mushrooms that are growing there. It's called a milk cap because milk comes out of it. If you join us on one of these mushroom forages, it's the best way to you know, kickstart your mushroom foraging career because I always say you can look at books all you want. The, the real way to learn a mushroom and learn to recognize it and identify it is to meet it in its natural habitat in the wild. Yes! Oh my god! <laughs> I just spotted one. Get in my risotto! That experience of meeting the mushrooms in the wild is really intensified on our Scottish mushroom morning because we also cook out there in the wild. We forage mushrooms and then as soon as we finish foraging, George gets out his stove and knocks up a quick mushroom risotto fresh from the wild. So it goes from, from forest to food within you know, a couple of minutes. We were finding chanterelles and hedgehog fungus and a variety of mushrooms that was really good to showcase what mushroom foraging is all about. Um, yeah, it was a really great way to be able to find those and basically sink them in a pot with some, some butter 
a mushroom risotto that we make from the Scottish pine forest is really different. It's got so many different flavours. You'll get, you know, acidity, meatiness, kind of rich, high aroma, sometimes even a floral note from some kinds of mushroom and then a deep base of umami. And that kind of explosion of flavours is never better than when you're standing in the wood eating the mushrooms that you've just picked for yourself. It's amazing. Visiting the smokery was one of the most emotional factory tours I've ever been on in my life. Scotland has been using smoke to preserve fish for hundreds, probably thousands of years and to see the smokery where they were doing everything to perfect commercial standards but they were also using all the traditional techniques. It was just amazing, like the, the guy walked us around to show where the smoke was coming from and I was expecting there to be, you know, electronic temperature controlled machines or something but no, it was just a row of garbage bins full of oak fires and he said to adjust the smoke you just pull the bin in and out and the further away it goes the less smoke there is. I remember standing there as the, the smoke billowed around us thinking this is where we're supposed to be you know one foot in the, the history and tradition of wild food preservation and one foot in the future of keeping that tradition alive and sharing that flavour with the world.